Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Matthew 28 19-20 Jesus answered, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless a man be born again of water and the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 5 He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. Mark, chapter 16, verse 16 In the seven holy sacraments, Jesus shares his life. Every sacrament has four necessary parts. Form, matter, intent, and proper minister. The sacramental form is Name, I baptize you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The sacramental matter is, water. The intent of the church is, to baptize. After first explaining all these things, baptize into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in living water. But if you have no living water, baptize into other water. And if you cannot do so in cold water, do so in warm. But if you have neither, pour out water three times upon the head, into the name of Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Didache, Chapter 7, Circa AD 90. There are many who assert that they are baptized in the name of Christ alone with only one immersion. But the evangelical precept which the very God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, handed down warns us to give each one holy baptism in the name of the Trinity, and with a triple immersion also, since our Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, Go, baptize all nations in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If, in fact, those of the heretics who are said to remain in places near your love confess perchance that they have been baptized only in the name of the Lord, without any uncertainty of doubt you will baptize them in the name of the Holy Trinity if they come to the Catholic faith. From the epistle Ad Monemus Ut to Gaudensius, Bishop of Volterra, about the year 560. Unless bishops or priests or deacons be on the spot, other disciples are called to the work. The word of the Lord ought not to be hidden by any. In like manner too, baptism, which is equally God's property, can be administered by all. But how much more is the rule of reverence and modesty incumbent on laymen, seeing that these powers belong to their superiors, lest they assume to themselves the specific function of the bishop. Emulation of the episcopal office is the mother of schisms. The most holy apostle has said that all things are lawful, but not all expedient. Tertullian died 240 on baptism, chapter 17. Those whom Judas baptized, Christ baptized. In like manner then, they whom a drunkard, baptized, those whom a murderer, baptized, those whom an adulterer, baptized, if it was the baptism of Christ, were baptized by Christ. Saint Augustine, died 430, Tractate 5 on the Gospel of John, number 18. Baptism is the first of the three sacraments of initiation. It is the basis and foundation for all the other sacraments. The other sacraments can only be given to the baptized. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Romans 6 verses 2 to 4 From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 16 to 17. And this food is called among us Eucharistia, of which no one is allowed to partake but the one who believes that the things which we teach are true, and who has been washed with the washing that is for the remission of sins. 
and unto regeneration, and who is so living as Christ has enjoined. St. Justin, martyr, died 165, First Apology, Chapter 66. His divine power has bestowed on us everything that makes for life and devotion, through the knowledge of Him, who called us by His own glory and power. Through these, He has bestowed on us the precious and very great promises, so that through them, you may come to share in the divine nature, after escaping from the corruption that is in the world because of evil desire. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. For if he is not to be worshipped, how can he deify me, by baptism? But, if he is to be worshipped, surely he is an object of adoration, and if an object of adoration, he must be God. The one is linked to the other, a truly golden and saving chain. And indeed from the Spirit, comes a new birth, and from the new birth, our new creation, and from the new creation, our deeper knowledge of the dignity of him, from whom it is derived. Saint Gregory Nazianzen, died 389, Fifth Theological Oration, on the Holy Spirit, number 28. Baptism is also one of the three sacraments of healing and forgiveness. Baptism cleanses us from the original sin of Adam and Eve, as well as all of our own actual sins. Peter said to them, Repent, and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. Acts 2 verses 38 to 39. You were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive, together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses having cancelled the bond, which stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Colossians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. Whereunto, baptism being of the like form, now saves you also. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the examination of a good conscience, towards God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21. Let no one then suppose, that baptism is merely the grace of remission of sins, or further, that of adoption. As John's was a baptism conferring only remission of sins. Whereas, we know full well, that as it purges our sins, and ministers to us the gift of the Holy Spirit, so also, it is the counterpart of the sufferings of Christ. For this cause, Paul, just now, cried aloud and said, Or are you ignorant, that all who were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him, by baptism into his death. These words, he spoke to some who were disposed to think, that baptism ministers to us the remission of sins and adoption, but has not further also, the fellowship by representation, of Christ's true sufferings. Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, died 386, Catechetical Lecture, 20.6. For from the infant newly born, to the old man bent with age. As there is none shut out from baptism, so there is none who, in baptism does not die to sin. But infants die only to original sin. Those who are older, die also to all the sins which their evil lives have added to the sin, which they brought with them. Saint Augustine, died 430, the Enchiridion chapter 43. Baptism is also one of the three sacraments of vocation. In baptism, everyone is given the vocation of the universal call to holiness. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshipper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Acts 16 verses 14 to 15 The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him, 
and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then, he and his entire family were baptized without delay. Acts 16 verses 29 to 34 In baptizing whole households, one can expect that St. Paul also baptized the little children as well. Jesus said, Let the children come to me, and do not prevent them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Matthew 19.14 This is one reason why the church baptizes infants. And therefore, dearest brother, this was our opinion in counsel, that by us, no one ought to be hindered from baptism, and from the grace of God who is merciful and kind and loving to all. Which, since it is to be observed and maintained in respect of all, we think is to be even more observed, in respect of infants and newly born persons, who on this very account deserve more from our help, and from the divine mercy, that immediately, on the very beginning of their birth, lamenting and weeping, they do nothing else but entreat. Saint Cyprian, died 270, Epistle 58, on the Baptism of Children, Number 6. As a parent, you want to give your child the very best. You don't wait to start talking to your children until they are old enough to decide what language they want to speak. Imagine that your great aunt Sophie, Jesus, left your child one million dollars, the grace of baptism. You don't let your child spend any of the money until your child is old enough to have a relationship with great aunt Sophie, Jesus. You want your child to understand and appreciate where this great gift came from. However, your child was born with a hideous inherited disease, original sin. The disease can be cured, but the operation, baptism, is going to cost one million dollars, the gift of grace. Do you not give your child this gift, because you want them to have a relationship with Great Aunt Sophie first? Catechism of the Catholic Church number 1258 The Church has always held the firm conviction that those who suffer death for the sake of the faith without having received baptism are baptized by their death for and with Christ. This baptism of blood, like the desire for baptism, brings about the fruits of baptism without being a sacrament. We have indeed, likewise, a second font of blood, namely, concerning which the Lord said, I have to be baptized with a baptism when he had been baptized already. For he had come by means of water and blood, just as John has written, that he might be baptized by the water and glorified by the blood, to make us, in like manner, called by water, chosen by blood. These two baptisms he sent out from the wound at his pierced side, in order that they who believed in his blood might be bathed with the water. And they who had been bathed in the water might likewise drink the blood. This is the baptism which both stands, in lieu of the fatal bathing, when that has not been received, and restores it when lost. Tertullian died 240, on baptism, chapter 16. That the place of baptism is sometimes supplied by martyrdom is supported by an argument, by no means trivial, which the blessed Cyprian adduces from the thief, to whom, though he was not baptized, it was yet said, Today you shall be with me in paradise. On considering which, again and again, I find that not only martyrdom for the sake of Christ may supply what was wanting of baptism, but also faith and conversion of heart, if recourse may not be had to the celebration of the mystery of baptism, for want of time. For neither was the thief crucified for the name of Christ, but as the reward of his own deeds. Nor did he suffer, because he believed, but he believed while suffering. It was shown, therefore, in the case of that thief, how great, is the power even without the visible sacrament of baptism, of what the apostle says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But the want is supplied invisibly, only when the administration of baptism is prevented, not by contempt for religion, but by the necessity of the moment. St. Augustine, on Baptism Against the Donatists, Book 4, Chapter 22. The Church, now sojourning on earth as an exile, is necessary for salvation. Christ, present to us in his body, which is the Church, is the one mediator and the unique way of salvation. In explicit terms, he himself affirmed the necessity of faith and baptism, and thereby affirmed also the necessity of the Church, 
For through baptism, as through a door, men enter the church. Whosoever, therefore, knowing that the Catholic Church was made necessary by Christ, would refuse to enter or to remain in it, could not be saved. Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium, number 14.